Good morning and welcome to the show. My name is Koi. Overcoming adversity is one of those things that is easier said than done. Havelock Ellis wrote that pain and death are part of life and so to reject them is to reject life itself. Learning to deal with and overcoming adversity is what makes us who we are. Every challenge and every difficulty we successfully confront in life serves to strengthen our will, confidence and ability to conquer, uh, conquer excuse me, future obstacles. Now why am I going on about adversity and conquering it? The woman we have in store on Midmorning Lifestyle is better known for her radiant smile, her beautiful looks, and her bubbly personality. Not only does she talk to us about her family life, but she also talks to us about the adversity that she has overcome in her life. That and much more coming up next on Midmorning Lifestyle. Pinky Galani Raj has been in the entertainment scene since the late 90s, and though not currently on screen or the airwaves, it's easy to see how this vivacious mother, wife and businesswoman has managed to stay afloat in the social scene. Uh, my father was from Gujarat. My mom's family is from uh, Delhi. Mm -hmm. So I'm a, what you can call a 0.5, I'm a <laughs> half caste, uh, which is nice. I like the mix. Um, and I'm a third generation Kenyan. Uh, growing up in Kenya, I never experienced any sort of stereotype when it came to my ethnicity. Um, I was I, I was exposed to all communities, all sort of um, tribes of Kenya. I guess uh, through my education, and and I was very happy. I mean, I never knew there was any differences growing up. Only once or twice I'd hear "way windy, windy, windy," but it was never um, like in a a very negative manner that it traumatized me. Not too many people have the courage to leave their comfort zone and venture into unknown territories, especially when talking about careers. One day somebody called me and said, oh, you know, we're doing a show on uh, KBC TV. Do you want to do it? And I was like, mm, yeah, all right, fine. And then he put me in front of a camera and the guy said, action. And the purpose was discovered. I was like, I have arrived. This is what I need to do for the rest of my life. And they say, if you find a job you love, you never work a day in your life. So I love being a part of the media. I love everything that I've done and what I'm doing. It's just a blessing. Radio was uh, something that I loved. I loved doing. It was live. It was something that you can't change. You put up that mic and you, you talk. And millions and millions of people used to tune into the shows that we did. And it was so much fun. But I didn't feel that there was any growth. So I had to be honest with myself. It wasn't just, oh, because I'm on radio, I need to still be here. And I needed to be very true to myself and say, all right, let me move on to the next thing and see what um, challenges come up for me. I like challenge. I don't like being bored of doing the same thing. I could do that now with my eyes closed. I've also acted in film. I've done uh, television shows. I've done stage performance. Um, it's been fun. It's been fun. It's been uh, something that I felt a passion for. I don't know how great I am at it. <laughs> uh, because I, I think with everything you need a bit of training. You can't just fall into it and say, okay, this is this is what I do. When it came to uh, radio, the same thing. I, I had the training, the background. So, you know, you, you need some guidelines, which I never found when it came to acting. I never uh, was trained in that. So it was something that I just did uh, the way that I thought was best. Uh, modeling actually came um, when I took a break from my studies. I had finished my O levels and my A levels and I was still uh, at the tender age of 16 so I didn't want to do university just then so I had a year to sort of do something and I always looked at my mother's pictures because she was a model and she modeled in front of um, you know uh, 
President Jomo Kenyatta. So that was an honor for her. And I look at those photos, and I and, and at that time I was like, ah, that's what I want to do. So I enrolled in Kelu, the modeling school, and that's how I got into modeling. I only won one competition, which was Miss India Kenya, and then I went to the Miss India Worldwide uh, pageant where I won Miss Best Hair. <laughs> it sounds so shallow. <laughs> But I won it. <laughs> um, and no, I think uh, being the Miss India Kenya, it exposed me to so much. And I, I enjoyed every minute of uh, the tenure. I got married in 2007. I was dating Raj from 1998. And of course, between 98 and 2007, it was not all smooth sailing, uh, just like with any other relationship. We had our challenges, our ups and downs, and it was very interesting. It was a journey that we had to do in order to learn each other, in order, in order to know that, yes, we wanted to spend the rest of our lives with each other. The journey of marriage has changed me in the sense that I have become I think a little bit more calm. My ego has been put to one side. <laughs> um, not all the time. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm enjoying being a married woman. It's, it's something that when I was in my late 20s, I never thought that I wanted. I was like, no, marriage is not for me, blah, blah, blah. But now that I'm, I'm, I'm married, I, I, I enjoy... Um, the support that he gives me and what I'm able to offer him as well. Don't just get married for the sake of getting married because everyone else is doing it. Um, know yourself as well. Be very happy and content with yourself because yes, as much as we hate the word, there is a lot of compromise in marriage. And uh, once you accept that, and you're, you're able to deal with it in a more mature manner and it, it doesn't affect you as much as it would when you're, you're not able to learn to compromise. We were curious to find out what it is about Raj that got Pinky to say I do. Raj is a gentleman. That's what I love about him. He's, he's a, a very nice person and I'm not just saying this because I married him. <laughs> I, I, I think he's got a very good heart and um, he's got great upbringing. He's very traditional and contemporary in a very nice way. It's a, it's a good mix, which I like. And he's also, he grounds me, which I need, you know. I, I didn't want someone who put me up on a pedestal, which he does in his own right, but I, I'm the sort of person who needs grounding in order for me to remain. <laughs> Otherwise, the head expands. <laughs> the other precious gem in Pinker's life is her daughter, Ariana. My daughter um, is two years old. Her name is Ariana. She is, you know, I will say what every mother will say. <laughs> She's a ray of sunshine. She's uh, completed me as a, as a human being. Uh, she's given me so much joy and I think out of everyone in my life she humbles me the most I, I love being around her I love learning from her I love uh, watching her grow um, you know like like I said it, I'll probably say what every mother says and I'll say it with so much joy so much pride because it is fun being a mother is amazing being a staying-at-home mom actually happened quite by accident. I was the editor of Drum, and um, the South African investors pulled out, and I found myself without a job, pregnant, and it was actually a blessing in disguise because uh, with me, I needed the rest. I needed. I was constantly sick, constantly sleepy, so I wouldn't have been a very productive editor anyway. So it was great. I was. Um, 
you know, flat on my back throughout, well, through most of my pregnancy. And then when the baby came, uh, I, I just got very much involved in, in being a mom. And I just said that I'm probably one of the lucky few who can uh, afford to take extra time out. Some people say that stay-at-home moms don't want to work. <laughs> you need to be a stay-at-home mom <laughs> because it is work. That is it. It's a job in itself. I mean, you're constantly on the go, checking on the baby, uh, especially when they're just born. You know, if it's breastfeeding, it's breastfeeding. If it's changing a diaper, if it's putting the baby to sleep, if it's soothing the baby. And also now, you know, as they, as they find their feet and they want to discover everything, you are always watching them. So it, it is a full-time job being a mom. Before I had Ariana, I was a very judgmental person. Like, oh, my daughter will never scream on a plane. My child will never throw food. My th child will never throw themselves in a mall on the floor and throw a tantrum. No way, not my child. But they're children. And, um, and, and that's what you have to do. You have to learn yourself while you're learning this child. They need their room and their space to grow and become who they need to be. So I'm not uh, very strict, yet I'm not very liberal. I'm in between. I, I, when I need to put my foot down, I put my foot down. The, the key thing that I want to teach her um, as a parent is respect. One, to respect herself and then to respect everyone around her. Her destiny, her life journey, her path, it's hers. You know, it's got nothing to do with me. All I can do is guide and be there. Ariana is especially a gift to the Rogers as Pinky went through devastating experiences that no woman would ever imagine until it happens. Uh, when I had my miscarriages, it was indeed a very dark time for me because um, you, as a woman, I don't think, like for me, I never expected, I just thought it was my God-given right to give birth. And um, I had to really educate myself and, and accept, again, that word comes up, it's acceptance, that no, um, there's maybe things that you need to do first before you're able to be given the gift of being a mother. It's not like before. Um, so. I, I did a lot of soul searching. I, I tried not to, you know, point blame the doctors or my husband or myself. I, I really said, okay, fine, this is, it's God's way. And this is where the spiritual side of me went deeper, maybe a level deeper. And uh, it's, it's just that, again, that word that comes up is acceptance. Yes, we all go through hard times in our lives. And mine was probably easier than what a lot of other women have gone through. Because once I started talking about this, so many more women came to me and said, oh, but this happened to me. Or I found out, you know, maybe friends or relatives who went through much worse. And um, my role was to just be there as a support system for them because of my experience. But we go through a lot and we don't talk about it as much but I think talk talking is healing we, we do need to um, be able to share to vent and to be able to be there for each other when I'm going through a difficult time the way I uplift myself is being with my mother uh, being with my brother my 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 husband the people who I know will give me nothing but love and then I eat a lot of chocolate and I watch a lot of, you know, funny things so that I get out of the, the low. I get out of the lull and the low. And then, like I said before, I pray. I pray and I deal. I, I, I work on myself. It's, it's an opportunity, I guess, for spiritual growth. 
balancing the two now it's easier because uh, the baby's slightly older so you know she goes to play school and I'm able to get away do my meetings hustle and then uh, you know g get back on time pick her up and then spend the afternoon with her key lessons when it comes to being a career woman uh, a wife a mother is um, just just being able one to commend yourself that you can do all of this because it's not easy and um, two is just being taking it easy on yourself not being too harsh on yourself loving yourself first and then everything else um, next I think if you love yourself then people love you and you're able to give love so um, whether it comes to your work your family your home just enjoy take take advantage of every moment savor in everything and appreciate what you have i think if we grumble a lot in our lives we actually attract a lot of uh, negative experiences so let's just appreciate what we have and um yeah like i said before just give yourself a pat on the back because you're doing a great job This is funny that you ask me, what am I most passionate about? It was the same question that I got when I won Miss India Kenya. What is your passion and why? And I remember then I thought, oh, what did I say? Why did I say that? I said everything wrong. But no, I said at that time, I'm passionate about my dreams because I believe that I have what it takes to make my dreams come true. But today, I think I'm passionate about life because it really is, everything about it is a blessing, is a gift. The fact that you're able to do things and see and, you know, because there is so much going on in the world at the moment. Every little thing is a blessing. So right now I'm passionate about life. I love life. I love my life and I love everything about um, what God has given me. When I fight with Raj, I sulk, and I go to bed sulky. <laughs> but we resolve it, like I said, because probably because we've known each other for such a long time. So it's it's fine, like, you know, they say never go to bed angry, but we always go to bed angry when we do fight. We don't talk to each other, but the next day, it's, you know, it's a new day, we forget about it. It's because I guess the same hap applies when you're growing up with your siblings, with you know the people that you love. You know that they're a part of your life, so you're able to uh, overlook uh, their mistakes, as he does mine as well. So you you know that you're in each other's lives for the long haul. It's not just oh for the next two months and that's it. So in that way, you're able to just move on. Don't sweat the small stuff. They're bigger things that we have to face together. When it comes to the high number of single women, and what I don't think they're not doing anything right. Um, we live in in a very fast world. You know, it's it's changing times, each to their own. If you want to be single and you, you feel that you know, you're not ready to commit to someone and, and you don't want to go down that road, it's, it's up to you. I think um, being a single woman is great if, if that's what you want to be. And you know, there's no judgment on my part. There's nothing wrong that you're doing. It, it really is. Everyone has their own choice. Everybody has their own destiny. So it's really not for me to sit here and pass judgment. <laughs> Pinky is not just a pretty face. However, it goes without saying that her looks have garnered her some lucrative deals. My deal with Suzy Beauty came up in 2012 when Suzy was launching her beauty products. Uh, having known Suzy for a very long time, she sort of came up to me and said, you know, this is what we want to do. We want a celebrity face. Would you mind? And, um, you know, it 
it just happened. It was not something that took a lot of negotiation or a lot of planning. Uh, it was just, I was very fortunate to be uh, the face of that uh, cosmetic line because it's one of its kind or the first in Kenya. And um, I was happy, it was an honor. Beauty secrets for me that I feel will work on all skin types is drink lots of water. <laughs> Our skin needs hydration and that comes from, of course, drinking water, using a moisturizer. Um, you know, it's, it's Bible when it comes to skincare. You, you do your cleansing, your toning, you exercise and eat right. And you look great and feel good. <laughs> I have a lot of friends, I have a lot of people that I know, but I, I, there are very few people that I constantly see and I constantly hang out with. That's just because of experience uh, where I know that not everybody means well for you, not everybody is true to you, and it's fine. Like I said, I, I'm not here to pass judgment, but uh, there are very few people who in, in my life I can call my real friends, and um, I'm blessed to have them. And I, I love dogs, and I, I love my dogs. Um, they, they, they are nothing but absolute love. And um, that, that love sort of, you know, it, it rubs off to everyone else uh, <laughs> around them. So I, I think that's with all pets. Pets are pure, you know? Animals are just, they, there's no ill will or ego when it comes to them. But I do appreciate all sorts of music. It's not like I have one particular artist that I love. Um, I used to love Janet Jackson when I was growing up, to a point where I used to dress like her, <laughs> dance like her. Um, but yeah, I, I appreciate all sorts of music. My current projects that I'm working on is the Home and Living magazine. That's a new magazine by Caramanti Media. I'm the editor of that magazine, and I, I, I'm enjoying it because it's about everything to do with the way you live. And the tagline is, love the way you live. So, you know, whether you're cooking, or you're entertaining, or you're buying a sofa, or you're traveling, or you're building a home, we want you to love it, and we want you to really enjoy it. So that's what I'm doing that's the current project that I'm working on of course I also do an event called Fa the Fashion and Beauty Expo Fab which is something that I enjoy there's so much that I'm working on and um, future projects well I try not to plan too much into the future so take every day as it comes and um, just you know any opportunity that comes by that's worthwhile I'll definitely grab it it's interesting to learn that this boisterous personality could have once been described as a loner or even a little strange once upon a time. I think I was an introvert in my younger days. I was very shy. Uh, my mom tells me I, I didn't know how to dance. They had to teach me. I had two left feet. I didn't know what rhythm was. And I, I'd shy away from crowds and people. And I'd like to be very much to myself. I'd, I'd talk to plants a lot and flowers. And I'd have my dolls and play by myself. I guess because I grew up uh, being the youngest of two brothers. So I was, you know, pretty much on my own in that regard, you know. So I was used to being alone and I, I enjoyed it. So I think as I grew older, mm -hmm. the opposite happened. <laughs> you know, my father passed away when I was six years old. And um, still, till date, I'll meet people, um, people who are quite high up there even politically today and they'll say to me oh my god your father was a great man or you know oh my god your father gave me a Mercedes that's the sort of guy he was at that time that's the legacy I'd like to leave that when you're dead and gone and 20 
30 year odd years later, you're still a memory and a good one. That is what I'd like to live. And not just to your family, not just to, oh, my mom was so great, or oh, uh, you know, my wife was amazing. To people all around. And no matter what the race or what, no matter what the background, that, wow, that person lived, that person existed. And here's how I'm better because of that person. Uh, I always tweet and I say, be a blessing. That's some of, some of the things that I, I, that's one thing that I really like to tweet is because you can be a blessing and no matter which way, small way, big way, be a blessing because today you have the opportunity of touching someone's life in a positive manner. Uh, why don't you? Instead of doing something negative to someone, do the opposite, do something good to someone and that person will bless you and remember you. This is funny that you ask me what am I most passionate about. It was the same question that I got when I won Miss India Kenya. What is your passion and why? And I remember then I thought, oh, what did I say? Why did I say that? I said everything wrong. But no, I said at that time I'm passionate about my dreams because I believe that I have what it takes to make my dreams come true. But today I think I'm passionate about life because it really is, everything about it is a blessing, is a gift. The fact that you're able to do things and see and, you know, because there is so much going on in the world at the moment. Every little thing is a blessing. It's that time when we hear from our relationship expert, Thomas Mundia. Men, I, I put men to the lions in the wilderness, the lions in the jungle or in the forest. Now you picture an, an antelope that comes to a lion and poses in front of a lion and says, catch me, here I am. I mean, that kills the entire thrill, isn't it, in the chase. I mean, the, what kind of uh, natural world would you have where antelopes come and throw themselves right in front of a, a lion? It, it destroys the thrill. The lions, the cheetah, love the chase. The same thing in relationships. We forget that relationships do have the same laws. And one of the most important laws ladies forget, and this is important to remember ladies that are listening to me. Men love the chase. Men love the mystery, the thrill of chasing you. The minute you throw yourself into his house, come to his house, you put yourself in front of him, the minute you drop your guard, you are available, for him to do whatever he wants to do with you. Ladies, you have lost the mystery. You'll be snug. In fact, sometimes I've had people wonder, I mean, we, I thought we were close. I thought we were tight. Now he's not even calling me. In such cases as what you're saying, you're cohabiting. The minute you cohabit, you're now there, you're living in a state of married people when you're not. The man has nothing more to chase. You've already brought yourself there. Men, by nature, whether you like it or not, love a lady who remains a mystery the less they reveal the more the man is interested to chase after why is it ask yourself you see gentlemen running around with the town ladies here and there jumping from one being the players they are but then eventually when they decide to settle they choose one from their country or from one of our neighboring countries like tz and uganda and settle with them why because there lies something that is there that is the mystery of a woman that that excites a man, that, that thing that a man still wants to chase, is still there. But the minute, ladies, you throw yourselves at men, either in your, the way you dress, you expose everything to him, you throw yourself, you want to come to his house, you, you want to have sex with him immediately, you just start a relationship, you jump into a house, you bring your things moving with your whole wardrobe. That's the lion that has had the antelope present itself to, it, to it, in front of it, and there's no thrill. So that is why he's not committing. Why should he commit? You're already there. He doesn't see anything that no, any more challenges him or excites him or drives him. 
men look at us even in the business world men are driven by the thrill of conquering but immediately you're there he doesn't need to commit why for what Now my father passed away when I was six years old, and um, still, till date, I'll meet people, um, people who are quite high up there, even politically today, and they'll say to me, "Oh my God, your father was a great man," or you know, "Oh my God, your father gave me a Mercedes." That's the sort of guy he was at that time. That's the legacy I'd like to leave. That when you're dead and gone, and 20, 30-year odd years later, you're still a memory and a good one. That is what I'd like to live, and not just to your family, not just to oh my mom was so great, or oh uh, you know my wife was amazing. To people all around. and no matter what the race or what no matter what the background that wow that person lived that person existed and here's how i'm better because of that person uh i always tweet and i say be a blessing that's some of some of the things that i, I that's one thing that i really like to tweet is because you can be a blessing in no matter which way small way big way be a blessing because today you have the opportunity of touching someone's life in a positive manner uh why don't you instead of doing something negative to someone do the opposite do something good to someone and that person will bless you and remember you In a past interview, Pinky pointed out how society tends to regard women who have had miscarriages or who are unable to carry pregnancies to full term as failures, which stigmatizes such women into silence. She says that she never hesitated to tell people about her experience as it was a way for her to deal with the grief. I hope that Pinky has inspired and motivated those of you who have gone through a similar situation. Send us your comments on Midmorning at standardmedia.co.ke and visit our Facebook page as well. It's Katie Midmorning. That's it for today. We do have more for you tomorrow. so be sure to join us.